What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another podcast, another episode of the Mirror Mind TMM with your host, Jordan Mirror. Okay, today's episode of the podcast, we'll be talking about mental health and therapy, borderline personality disorder, surviving instead of living, how to recognize manipulation, anger issues, and addiction and bloodline addiction. Okay, let's start it off with mental health and therapy. Now, as many uh, of y'all know, I am not, I would, how do I say this tonight? I'm pretty fucked up in the head. Pretty fucked up. I keep going every day, you know, I'm not going to kill myself. I've had many opportunities to do so, haven't died. So at this point, we're just going to see the shit through. Um, But I actually used to go to therapy. I did. I went to therapy for the better part, I want to say, of about six months. And the thing with therapy is this. It's really nice to have someone talk to about shit. It is, you know, because life can get extremely overwhelming and it can feel like you have the pressure of the world just kind of crushing down on you. But after a while, you start to realize that, you know, this, this is this person isn't a friend. They're not someone that truly care about you. You're essentially paying them to talk. To them about your issues and so when I started to really think about it and I was like damn like this person does not give a fuck about what I'm talking about they don't care what I'm saying and if I didn't pay them they wouldn't be here to listen um my my gung-ho-ness about you know continuing therapy just faded away I was like I don't want to sit in a fucking room for about an hour and, and, and talk to a random stranger about my life. Um, and see, this is another thing I did, right? When you're in therapy, right, you're talking with a person. See, I, you know, I, I know how to bait people into saying shit just to see how they would react if I would. If, like, for example, I would talk about a certain subject, right, to see how the therapist would respond to it. The therapist, you know, when I'm jokingly talking about the subject, they had negative energy about that subject. Now, I'm uncomfortable to truly talk about that subject because you thought I wasn't serious about it and and then you, you know, that wasn't received well, essentially. So um, that could definitely be an off-putting thing. Um, did I gain anything from therapy? Um... I can't say I really did, honestly. I really can't say I did. Um, and and truthfully, it was just easier to talk to, I guess, girls that I would sleep with. You know, we would have sex and then just have a little chat with them afterwards. And my, you know, my friends, I, you know, I back in high school, I, you know, I used to hang with a bunch of upperclassmen, and whenever I would go through shit, I just talk with them, and they were kind of like, you know, role models for certain shit. So I would say that for me was definitely better than therapy. But um, I think something that is not really harped on enough nowadays is how important your mental health is. Because take for me, you can be the most physically fit, you know, the most socially attractive, quote unquote, person out there. And if your brain is not cool, you are not going to be cool. Your energy is not going to be cool. You're not going to want to do shit. You're going to wake up with, you know, regrets like, why did I wake up in the first place? And and life as a whole is just going to be a drag. And and I know, especially this, this is going to be, you know, mainly for the men right here. It's like, boys, I know it's, it's tough, you know, growing up as a, as a man in this world, because I know for myself, when I was growing up, whenever I would cry, I, I would be told... Jordan, stop acting like a broad. Jordan, we only have one daughter. And and so for me, what that did for me is I associated crying with like weakness or being lesser than. And so I just bottled up all my emotions, like sadness that, that, that just got bottled up. And the problem with doing so is now for me, I unless I take a substance, I cannot cry. I can't do it. it the tears will not... I, I have mentally blocked out the emotion of, you know, that, that causes tears to fall out so much to where they just won't come out. And there'll be times when I'm feeling sad and I can't cry. And that shit, it, 
it's it, it it's fucking terrible because you're like I just want to fucking cry. I just want the shit to get out of me. Like please let me cry and and your own mind won't let you cry. So for for all the young men out there, just just know it's okay to it's it's it's, it's okay to cry. You're not weak for crying, and actually it takes a very strong man to cry. It takes a very strong man to cry, you know. Um, in life, sometimes you win, and sometimes you learn. You know, we need to stop. We we gotta, we gotta stop looking at shit like a loss. That relationship didn't work out. That was a loss. This job opportunity didn't work out. That was a loss. Let me tell you guys some shit right now. You don't learn much from winning. You really don't. You know why? Because you think you got the formula down pat. If you keep, you gotta look at, just, just look at the top athletes out there, right? That constantly win, constantly win, constantly win. And look at that one time they lose. The, it, the shit just, it, it breaks them. Mentally. They don't know how to fucking come back from a loss. Look at athletes, you know, like the great Mike Tyson. On top greatness. But when you lose, if you've never lost before, you never had to deal with the, the emotional agony that is losing and feeling like a failure. If you win too much and then get that one loss, you might never recover from that loss. Never. So instead of looking at it like a loss, look at it like a lesson. Because I'm going to say, anytime you fuck up, that is an opportunity for you to adapt to your situation. If you guys think I got to where I am right now, living by myself at 19 years old, paying $3,000 for a fucking apartment, because I, I fucking won every time I did some shit. You got a lot to I've lost a lot in life. A lot of shit that, in the moment, I, 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 I just had to ask the universe, why me? You know? What, what the fuck did I do to deserve this shit? Why couldn't this shit work out? I don't deserve to be happy. Why didn't that idea work out? Am I not smart enough? Am I not good enough? When you get into that that realm of questioning yourself, that's that's when you can really grow as a person because you can really start to analyze and think about what really happened. And I promise you, if whenever you have some fucked up shit that happens in your life, if you just take about 10 minutes to really just analyze and think about what happened to you, you're going to realize shit could have won been a whole lot worse than what actually happened. And two, it's really not that hard to learn from. Be that a loss in the sport, a failed grade, a failed relationship, all those things are opportunities for you to grow as a person and to learn. People always will hit me in my DM and be like, Jordan, what do I do? You know, this relationship didn't work out. How do I, how you get over someone? How do you do this? I'm going to tell you right now, if you truly had love for someone, it's you might not never really get over that person. You really might never because the emotions you felt for that person to you were extremely real. What you can do, though, however, is get through the situation. Persevere. What I tell people now is just the relationships that didn't work, take all the good from them and acknowledge the bad. Because in the entirety of the relationship, there were points when you were happy. Take those points. What did you do to be happy in those relationships at those moments? And then look at the shit that didn't work out. Why were there so many arguments? Why was there a disconnect? Were you too emotionally available too quickly? Were you too emotionally unavailable? For too long so you got to just start weighing shit and just thinking like I can always improve myself and do that for yourself because I promise you until until you are ready to love yourself you will never be ready for a relationship it's just not because you're going to go into a relationship and, and expect that person to be your foundation for your happiness and you can't do that because you're giving too much power to another human being for your own happiness. When that person can, you know, you don't own that person. That person can leave, they could die, anything could happen, and then what? Your happiness is just gone? No, you have to be able. I say this a relationship can never truly be 100%, 100%. Because if you're 100% to that person, they're 100% to you, 
neither one of y'all is taking time to develop your own skills and grow as individual people. So that's why I feel like relationships have to be 50-50. They have to be. That 50-50 adds up to 100. And the, and the access 50 on both sides is helping I both one of both of you people grow as individuals. I think that's important. I think a lot of people don't they don't look at it like that nowadays because they're they're so obsessed with I don't it's just on social media people they just put these fucking fake ass relationships out like everything is just peaches and cream. I'm like, that's not how that shit works, bro. It's really not. If you truly love someone, you're gonna go through hell for them. You're gonna go through hell for them. But that's just because they're going to go through hell for you as well. Okay. Next part. Borderline personality disorder. Okay, y'all. For, for those that don't know what a BPD is, essentially it is a, an, a, a chemical imbalance in, in the receptors in your brain that really allow you to... cope with human emotions. That's why a lot of people that have, you know, bipolar disorder, they'll go, they're like really hot and cold, you know. We'll go from really smiling and happy and we're the life of the party to why am I here? What the fuck is going on with me? Do I even still want to be alive? To I hate everything. I fucking, I want to just kill every. It's just, it's hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And what I will say is this. Having bipolar disorder, something else you you get with that is, well, what I call it is an adaptive personality. And the thing with an adaptive personality is you have to really be careful on who you hang around because you are extremely susceptible to downloading their personality into your memory slot. This can happen with a new friend, a new family member. Hell, it can happen with with, with shows. If any of y'all have ever been watching a TV show and a certain character you've really liked once that show ends, you'll, you know, and while that show is going on, you'll really start to look, if you really look at yourself, you'll notice that you're portraying a lot of the characteristics that your favorite character is showing. And yeah, sometimes that's needed, but, you know, if, if you if you like to watch a lot of fucking serial killer shows and, you know, your, your favorite character is a damn serial killer, that could be a dangerous personality to, um, to download into your database, you see. The mind is a very... It's like a sponge, guys. It's like a sponge. And... You can gain a lot of great information from looking at certain people and, you know, aspiring to be like certain people. And you can also get a lot of fucked up shit trying to be like the wrong person. So I would just say, um, be aware of the shows you watch if you do suffer from BPD. And as well as... For those that have friends that suffer from bipolar disorder, understand there's going to be times that that person goes through a manic episode. And I mean, and, and what that is, is it's a really high energy, high intense, you know, like kind of living off the dopamine time period. And they, they might be really, you know, chaotic, really sporadic. And just really watch your friends closely. You know, just watch them closely and, and be supportive of them. Not saying that, you know, you have to allow them to, you know, mess up your own mental health, but it is important to be supportive of those that suffer from bipolar disorder. And if you if you do have the disorder, just know it's there's you can still live a very good life. You just have to be really cautious on who you hang around and what you watch. Because it's really easy for you to adapt to a personality. And, and that's why a lot of people that have, you know, BPD, it's really hard for them to stay in long-term relationships because if they enter, you know, a relationship on, on one of those manic episodes, one of the highs, you know, shit is really great. And the person that they, you know, entered that romantic relationship with may have become addicted to that manic episode and not the person themselves. Because during the episode, they want to do everything. They want to be adventurous. They want to do all this, do all that. But when that episode finally ended and they crashed then you had to actually deal with them as a real person and they had to deal with you as a real person person and, and they like took off the, the dumbass glasses and they can see you for all your flaws and you can see them for all their flaws so 
that's why it's extremely difficult to um, be in a successful relationship when you have BPD. Not impossible, but it is difficult and it does take a lot of work. Next, we're going to talk about survival instead of living. Okay. If you're like me and you came from a situation where you were raised on survival instead of love, you understand that you do things in your life not to make you happy or to make sure you keep going day in, day out. And though having that mindset in a given situation is 110% required to survive, there's going to be a point in your life when you don't have to do that anymore. And I know you guys are hearing that like, fuck that, Jordan. I always got to be on my 10 toes, head on the swivel. I have to do this. I have to do that. I get that. It's, it's a really useful trait actually to have in life, but you have to understand worrying every single day what you're going to do next, not letting anyone in is not living a fulfilled life. It is merely keeping yourself alive. That's why it's called survival. And, and, and those that come from extremely traumatic pasts and, and fucked up families, I know it can be hard to try to let anyone in because you're so used to being disappointed to, to the point where you just you shut people off emotionally. You're not even given the opportunity to let them in because you've been hurt so much by those that brought you into this world or those that you fell in love with. And it's a lot. You know, it's a lot. I know after a while, you're just like, what the fuck is the point of me continuously letting people all in over and over and over? I'm tired of this shit. This shit hurts. They said they weren't going to leave me. That's what the last 10 people said. They weren't going to leave me. Why the fuck did I keep leaving? What's wrong with me? You know, fuck this. I'm shutting it off. But humans need human interaction. It's a necessity in us. We need it. No matter how much we want to tell ourselves, we hate it. We don't like this shit. Only reason we say that shit is because we didn't get enough of it when we were younger. So we have to train our minds not to like some stuff so that it doesn't kill you when you don't have it. So I will say this, it's, it, it's going to take a little bit to get used to living instead of surviving, you know, doing things that you find fun, letting people in, trusting people. Because that's the thing with relationships, be that romantic and or otherwise, they're not 100% guaranteed, but that's the, that's the beauty of them. They're not guaranteed. So that's why you have to enjoy every waking moment of them. And you can't do that if you're always questioning what the next person's motives, motives are. What are they going to do to you? You can't do that. If the shit don't work out, the shit don't work out. It sucks, but the shit don't work out. If it didn't physically kill you, you just learned a lesson there. And only you can tell yourself what that lesson is and what you should take from it. But you, you got to let yourself open up and you got to be willing to accept affection. You have to. You have to. You living a life full of hate and anger is is not a fulfilled life, and it'll keep you alive, but it's not really you. It's like this mindless robot doing mundane shit every single day, just in a pattern because you're used to it, but you're not actually taking time to treat yourself. You know, and, and really enjoy the little things. Do it for you. If you're not going to do it for anyone else, do it for you. Do it for the little kid in you that didn't get that when you were younger. Because everything you had to deal with, you had all this fucking anger and all this fear and all this danger around you. You're strong. You survived. You got through it. I know you may think, what the fuck you talking about? I got through it. I'm still going through it. No, no, no. You got through it. You're here. The fact that you even have time to think about it happened means you're not in survival mode no more. It's okay to start living now. It is your life. And you do deserve to be happy. How to recognize manipulation. Okay, so this can be manipulation from a financial standpoint, manipulation from a romantic standpoint. Just look at when these people are contacting you and what you're getting out of it and what they're getting out of it. Because if you're, you know, from it's, it's easier to show in a romantic situation. 
if you're dating a person, you know, you really like a person and they're only contacting you when it's convenient for them, for them. And it's, you know, it's two, two o'clock in the morning. You know, they're not hitting you during the day. They're never trying to make time for you. And you're always trying to make time for them. And then anytime that you call them out on their bullshit, they, 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 they make some shit up. Oh, my life is hard. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You have to start thinking your life is hard too. And yet you're putting forth the effort. If they start, if they hold shit over their head, over your head, and say, "Oh, it's because a certain family member, you know, passed away recently," and you had a family member that's passed away recently too, and yet you're still trying, you just gotta just start thinking what you do for people versus what they do for you. You know, now people are gonna have you know shit that is obviously gonna hold them back sometimes, and they can't talk to you twenty four seven. You know, we're adults here; we have lives. But at a certain point, you gotta start thinking, "Hey, do they really care about me?" Or are they just using me? Something else that, you know, a manipulator would do in a relationship is um, victim. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll play the victim role very good. They'll poke the bear. They'll, they'll antagonize you to no avail. And then when you finally snap and you finally get, you know, spasm, and that's when they want to show everyone around you. See? See, look, I told you. I told you. All they want to do is get angry. I told you. But they're not telling people how... They're insulting you daily or they're always downplaying your achievements or they're always just pointing out your flaws. Then they're not going to talk about that because then that would show people that they're really they're, they're really the perpetrator, they're really the predator and you are the true victim. So just be be extremely aware when you're getting into situations with those that play the victim role and those that would not do for you as you would do for them. Anger issues. Okay. Now, this is the thing with anger issues, right? This is the thing with anger. Anger is a mask for fear. I know myself, I I have anger issues, and, and those anger issues stem from when I was younger, uh, a fear uh, that people were going to pick on me. You know, I used to get bullied when I was younger. And and they would pick on me. They'd pick on me for my skin tone. They would pick on me because I was overweight when I was younger. They would pick on me because... I was not, I, I didn't act how conventional black kids would act. I would just get picked on, you know, never physical, but it, would all, it was always, you know, psychological and emotional shit. Oh, ha, ha, Jordan, you know, I was always the butt of the jokes. And it wasn't until I got angry and I got mean and I started to flash on people that I started to get that respect that I felt that I deserved. So then for years, that just became who I was. I am the big bad wolf. I am the bad guy. I'm going to fucking flash him. Leave me the fuck alone. I will hurt you. But really, all that was was just a mask because I'm scared that they're going to fucking see that I was still just, you know, insecure little kid. And so I feel like all anger really stems from a deeper fear. Mm. And to those that, you know, have the moments when you just black out anger because you just... Because anger is a response to the world when you feel when you know you're not getting treated the way you deserve. You know you're not. You know you deserve better. And you're not getting that type of treatment. So you just flash. You, you know, this fucking teacher gave me a bad grade. This fucking coach aren't listening to me. My fucking significant other is listening to my parents and my family. I'm just angry. I'm, guys, I'm going to tell you, right now, I've, I've, I've hurt my hand many times. I've damaged a lot of my own property, just flashing. I've scared loved ones, just flashing. It's 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 just anger is a is a important survival emotion, but in your day to day life, it is a dangerous thing to not have control over. Extremely dangerous. It can get you in a lot of trouble. It can even get you killed. I'm gonna say anger is this. Anger is like fire. If used properly, keep you warm, keep you fed, keep you protected. If used improperly, it can burn your whole fucking life down. To ash. Scold yourself. Burn those near you. Just be careful with your anger. And understand that it is okay that sometimes you get angry. But before you hit that 
switch and just spaz and just, you know, turn into this mindless monster. Just just take a moment to breathe and ask yourself, is what I'm getting angry over even worth my anger? Because truly, if someone can get you angry, that means you care about that person. And you have to start asking yourself, is it worth caring about this person to where I get this angry? Because now they have a certain control over you. It's like a little switch. Because people don't get angry over shit they don't, they're not passionate about, they don't care about. So just start taking time and just start thinking to yourself, is this shit really worth me getting this angry over? Really? Honestly, what I would recommend doing is sleep on it. If you, if you think you're really a man or someone, you think you really hate this person, sleep on it. Because if you're truly angry and you hate this person, you're going to be the, you're gonna be the same amount of anger when you wake up tomorrow, the next day. So, just sleep on the shit for a little bit, you know? And if you're still angry, beat their ass. <laughs> anyway, addiction and bloodline addiction. I have a lot of addicts in my family, guys. A lot of addicts. So I can't really dabble in pills, drugs. I, I can't do shit like that. I don't have the luxury because I'll, I'm i susceptible to really getting into some bad shit doing that. Um, and I, I do believe that there's bloodline addiction. And, and most addiction is usually used to cope with trauma. You know, instead of talking it out, you get high, you fuck, you know. You drink. You do something that takes your mind off of the real issue at hand. And though that may seem fun, and, you, and though you know it may be working, quote unquote, at the in the moment, eventually your body's gonna give out from that shit. It, it's a it's a temporary fix for what could be a long term issue. So, just know you're no weaker for having an addiction. Everyone has their, their, their vices in life. But just don't let, don't let the addiction win. And there's nothing wrong with having those minor slip-ups. Say, you're, you know, you've been clean for seven years and then one day you fuck up. That don't take away those seven years. That's one minor fuck-up. Get right back up on that horse. Keep going. You got your whole life ahead of you. Don't let, don't let something less than you win. It's not worth it. And you're way too strong for that shit. I promise you, you are. I know a lot of y'all don't think that y'all are that strong because of what you've been through, but it is because of what you've been through that makes you a fucking warrior, a real beast. I'm telling y'all. People that don't go through shit don't know how to get through shit. You are strong. You're savage. All y'all. Keep talking that shit out. Peace.